1395, Adelaide's 5AA. This is Richard Pascoe. At three minutes past two here on this Saturday afternoon. A regular since I have been uh, on air has been the wonderful Steve Davis. We've had constructive conversation steve we've had uh brutal conversations haven't we so yes how are you today <laughs> well it's great um you know what i picked a fantastic week to get a little um holiday house at glenelg to spend time at the beach with the family watching about 700 millimeters of water just fall from the sky it's a bit wet down there is it steve <laughs> just a little bit it's, but it's okay. It's lovely. It's actually the weather. It's actually beautifully temperature-wise. I don't know what you've got with your big weather station in the studio, but it's really comfortable outside. And we've been in at the beach while it's raining because that's just goes against everything your parents told you when you were younger. And it's oh, get out in the rain! Good heavens! Yes, <laughs> it, it, it cleans things off. It's 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 COVID friendly. It's magnificent. And I appreciate you come. You're on holidays and talking to us on Five AA for a short time today. What That's have you right. got for us today, Steve? In my day job, uh, I do marketing, and so I'm lucky enough at the moment. Uh, we've talked about marketing to be able to help small business people just get their head around stuff at a very subsidised rate, thanks to our glorious uh, government. And I'm meeting some of the most amazing people, and. I've got a really soft spot for, for small business. And I just wonder, everyone listening, just ponder what you've done in the last week. And I would be shocked if almost all your interactions weren't involving some sort of small business. That we, we it, it, small business just keeps this place ticking over. And even when we go to the big end of town, to our, our main supermarket chains, there's a lot of stuff in there that, that your neighbour is making, people working uh, for these places. So there's so many good stories. And I, I've just met one guy and I thought, you know what, Richard Pascoe would like this story. And it was um, a guy called Josh Groudon. Have you come across that name before? I know that I, I, the name rings a bell with me. Okay. Well, some people, because we've got a lot of avid sports fans here at 5AA, um, will, reckon, will recognize him from some AFL chatter. So basically, Josh grew up in Clare uh, and he now runs a little consultancy called The Kicking Consultant. But here's his story. This is great. This is how tragedy can be turned into something that is really valuable. So he's like like many people growing up here, uh, they fall in love with AFL. They want to be uh, in the lights. And in 2010, he was 17 years old. So just a, a few years younger than you and me. Um, he got pre-listed to play for GWS in the AFL at That's age right. 17. Yes, now I know, yes. Yeah, so there he was, pulled up stumps, went across to Sydney. Uh, he got coached by Kevin Sheedy, and no matter where you sit on the AFL spectrum, that's got to be something that will stay with you all your life. I mean, that man is a legend. He is, and uh, if you ever get the chance to hear him do a talk, Go to it. It's a, a oh great really? Night, you've heard night. you've heard one? I have. Oh, the st you just imagine the stories these guys get just to drop into those after dinner talks. Anyway, he was there for about three years, but uh, about a year or so into this, they were playing a reserves game against the Suns, and he got tackled mid kick. He was about to kick. This guy came in, crunched him, and snapped one of his leg bones. I don't know if it was the top or the bottom. It was horrific fracture, so bad that he then spent the next 12 months in rehab. So he, he just imagine just for a second this journey, like you finally made it. You're in the shortlist to be on the, the major stage. This happens. It's so bad it takes 12 months to rehab. He has to have two hip operations and you know he could be forgiven for turning into a real negative person, uh, rightfully bitter at the whole world. And so, um, three years in, he gets the message from uh, the club: uh, "You're being delisted. We don't need you anymore." He does not get a chance to play an AFL game. So crushing dreams, but 
He was just about to make plans to head back to play for the SANFL. I think it was Woodby or West Torrens. And one thing that he grew up watching a lot on SBS was the, the Super Bowl. And I, I know, Richard, that you happen to go to some pretty exclusive Super Bowl parties from time to time, I have if been, I'm not mistaken. I have been to a couple of them in my time. <laughs> well, he was, like you, loved the whole spectacle, the lights, the action, everything. Anyway, a, a mob called Pro Kick down in Melbourne, they actually poach AFL players to train them up to be punters. And I'm not a big American football person, but the punter is the guy who sort of is out of all the tackling, stands behind the pack a bit. The guys up front work out their strategy and their job is to throw the ball to him. He gets about two steps and he's got to launch this ball forward as as far and as accurately as possible. That's a punter. Anyway, he went to do this training instead. And nine months into this, he gets offered a full scholarship at Louisiana State University uh, to be a punter for their football team. And he studies body mechanics, which was his real you know, passion, because when you're at that elite level of sport, you just want to learn as much as you can. So there he is. He is because he had all that stuff with his broken leg, the role of punter is fine because he doesn't have to withstand tackles. He has five fantastic years there uh, and then gradually comes back to South Australia just as COVID hit. <laughs> what do you do? And so he thought, you know what? I learned more in my nine months with pro kick about kicking than I did in five years of AFL and this precision. So his drills that his coaches had him going through, you can imagine in AFL, you're doing everything. But in that game, you've all got your very, very specific roles. And he just got this down to an art. And so this is another small business in South Australia. That's the backstory. And now he's like putting up these free resources and paid for resources that are really low price to help people improve their kicking in AFL. Which is and great. I, don't, I think it's great. And one little thing, when I was working with him, I said, you know what? Do you know who would benefit from this? Mums and dads who've got an avid footy star to be, and you know how you go out as a parent, you have a kick of the football and you you know, you know have a bit of fun, but you don't know if you're really as good as the coach could be. If you got hold of some of his free guides and learn some of those drills, you could turn those backyard you know, footy times into something really helpful. And I consider that as a parent, a superannuation investment. Because if, you're, if your kid starts earning the big monies and you're in the good books, uh, there you oh, go, yeah. you've got a wonderful yeah. retirement. If, you, if you've got a kid that, that's really tall and can turn into the next Charlie Dixon and people out there listening would know, I would never say anybody else as well because you know, <laughs> being the Port Adelaide fan that I am, I, I think yeah. it's a great idea, Steve, to teach the kids yeah. the basics of um, a sport. And you yeah. know, it really is because most of us can't kick, you know, I can kick a football. Um, yeah. Can I do it properly or reasonably properly? You know, in, in yep. my time, but probably not as good as Josh, and, and not as good as you know, Cornsy or um, you know anybody else. But I'm not a bad yeah. kick, but yeah, you know, I would need practice. And you know what? Because of that pathway he took, he's got this really specific focus. How do you hold the ball? How do you drop it? Yeah. You know, and 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 just that. Can you imagine? Because you've got the Cornsies out there, and they're good as well. But someone coming up who's got that basics rock solid is just going to you know set themselves up for the future so he's called the kicking consultant i just love it you know just think there could be your local butcher or hairdresser or whomever who's had this sort of bizarre story behind that's led them to be crafting the small business they're running and i i just uh, you know it's the patchwork that makes south australia what it is and i just thought i wanted to share a bit of his story with you. No, that's really good. Thank you, Steve. Steve, I'm going to let you get back to holidays. Oh, well, it'll be my joy. I might even, uh, we haven't got a football here. We've got a, um, a soccer ball. I don't know if that just undermines anything, but oh, I, I'm reckon you've I have just disappointed. It. You've just disappointed me now. Go down the shops and buy your kids a footy. Good. No, heavens. I'm just going to dress up and call myself Sam Kerr and, uh, and show them how to play the other game. So there you go. Okay, because I did. This is controversial. The other game's not as good as AFL. Oh, 
you are talking to someone who played soccer at primary school level. I was left back, so number two, and in my last game at Marion Primary School, right. I scored a goal. The only defender in history, I think, to ever score a goal. I somehow got the ball. I broke through every other player because in primary school, everyone crowds the ball. It was just me and the other goalie. There Fantastic. We... I'll take that to my grave, that story. And that, that's your greatest sporting triumph, isn't it, Steve? <laughs> There's Fantastic. nothing wrong with that. We all remember that. Yes. I've five, got a photo. I was going about five years ago, I was on uh, up at Belair, and I was on Belair Oval, and somebody had left a footy about the 50-metre line, and uh, I could still launch just one kick, bang, straight through the middle. Oh, and was anyone there to witness it? There was, and they went, you can kick a footy. It's all right, I'm a big bloke, but uh, yeah. Big as in tall people say so yes. There's there's our sport. There's our last sporting um, uh, oh. memories say so yes. Dude, one quick thing I saw on one of Josh's things. He even includes little cheats on how you can take your normal kick and make it longer. So he, this guy, knows his stuff. I love it. No, it's very good. So for people out there, Josh Groden, the punter from Down Under. Yeah, Groden, Josh Groden, Groden, punter from Down Under. Yep. Yeah, the kicking consultant he is. Which is good. Uh, I've, I've yeah. pulled his website up. It's looking very good and lots of tips out there. So, yeah, as Steve said, if you've got kids in the family who want to know how to kick a football, why don't you go along, grab some of the stuff on there, learn how to kick properly, and then teach your kids. Thank you, Steve, for taking time right. from your holiday. Go out in the rain and play, <laughs> play with the kids. All right? I was using you as an excuse not to be in the rain. Okay, off I go. No, off I you're go. all dry now. Out you go. Thanks, Steve. Bye. Bye. We will be back after a short break.